Hi, I'm Ollie Hampton and I'm introducing Protospray, a novel way to combine 3D printing and spraying to create irregularly shaped interactive displays. Even though I'm not talking to you in person, I'd like you all to join me in our own bit of interactivity wherever you are. If you could each raise your index finger into the air for me, I'd like you to draw a simple screen out in front of you. So obviously I can't see what you've drawn, but when I've done this in person, most people have drawn rectangles. This isn't so surprising given that most of the displays around us are rectangular, including the one that you're probably watching me on right now. This single form of display limits our interaction with computers, and significant work exists around interacting in different spaces. I'm going to talk about Protospray, a new method to create irregularly shaped displays and to prototype interactive objects with forms that are custom for their use. Although we have an ambitious goal, Protospray is a straightforward fabrication process. It can be surmised in two steps. First, an object is printed on a multi-material 3D printer to create the design of the interactive object. Second, we spray on active materials to create display elements that light up. We created a series of objects using the protospray process to demonstrate its ability for producing irregularly shaped interactive displays. This is a traditional seven segment display that we've embedded into a 3D printed block. Even though it has rectangular form, it shows the dynamic application of the process and the potential for fabrication of a handheld device. We produced a dome with concentric rings on it to indicate movement into or out of a surface. It's only through protospray that we're able to get the enclosure of the rings within each other and the application to a surface curved in more than one plane. Lastly, we demonstrate an object in the shape of a Mobius strip with seven directional arrows. These embedded arrows demonstrate movement along its single surface. This could be produced as an educational device and shows protospray's ability to create truly irregularly shaped display elements. You may be wondering how displays work. We'll briefly return to the fundamentals. Most displays have a sandwich structure with the bread as the conductive electrodes and the filling as the active material that either changes color or emits light. The active component can be a structure or a layerable material. There are a range of different display types. On the left, we have examples of displays that are created in enclosed manufactured form. We have liquid crystal displays used in computer screens, organic LEDs increasingly used in TVs, and electronic ink used in e-readers. On the right, we have materials that have been used in display fabrication, although they are not limited in this use. They're suitable for fabrication because they can be layered on as a paint or as an ink. These materials have different stimuli and either emit light or change colour. Specifically, electroluminescent material emits light when undergoing electrical stimulus. This is the material that protospray is based on. Traditional electroluminescent structures are formed of a series of layers applied to a pre-existing object in a sandwich structure. Here, the substrate or base object is shown in grey on which the other four materials are layered sequentially. First is the base electrode, often a metal-based substance such as copper paint. Then a cohesive layer of dielectric material is applied. The emissive layer is typically a suspension of electroluminescent phosphor. And lastly, the surface electrode is a transparent conductive material that forms an electrical connection and through which the display can be viewed. Display fabrication looks at expanding the scope of computer interaction using irregularly shaped displays. Manufactured displays, such as phones or monitors, are limited to rectangular fixed shapes and pixelated to allow for highly configurable output, but the rigidity of their, those displays limits potential interaction spaces. Display fabrication typically uses segmented displays rather than pixelated, with custom shapes that can be switched on or off. Segmentation limits the configurability of information output, but it reduces the complexity which allows for fabrication. Sweeney et al. introduced the concept of displays as a material, for empowering makers to build their own custom shaped displays. Other work introduces display fabrication and the benefits of electroluminescent material. In print screen, Olberding et al. introduced custom shaped electroluminescent displays using screen printing techniques. This allows for fabrication of displays on irregular substrates, including those that can be bent or folded. In Object Skin, Groger et al. introduced hydroprinting for adding interactivity to pre-existing irregularly shaped objects. 
Hydroprinting is the process of suspending material on the surface of a fluid and dipping in an object to create a coating. This work creates electrodes on irregular surfaces and demonstrates some layering of electroluminescent paint. We introduced protospray, a combined additive manufacturing method for producing irregularly shaped displays. Specifically, we're introducing a new fabrication process based on spraying and the 3D printing of channels. The layering structure involved in protospray consists of 3D printing a base object with embedded conductive electrodes. The object is printed in insulating plastic, shown in white, with printed conductive plastic channels in pink. These conductive channels act as wires and determine the shape and location of display segments. We build on the work of Capricate, who 3D print channels for touch sensing. In protospray, these channels are also used to power electroluminescent material, as well as sensing capacitive touch. The electroluminescent materials are then sprayed on top of the channeled structure. Spraying allows for quick dry and cohesive layers of active material. It is a method that lends itself well to irregular surfaces, sharp edges, and an iterative design process. Channeling provides a number of benefits over layered electrodes. Here we have the traditional electroluminescent layering structure on the left and our protospray channel version on the right. Channeling allows for programmatic placement of base electrodes to shape the electroluminescent segments. It also allows for complex structures with electrodes in a 3D space so that they can cross over each other and for easy wire attachment. Lastly, channeling simplifies the fabrication process and helps reduce error. Here we can see some of the channeling benefits in action, with programmatic shaping, electrodes crossing over each other, and space for regular attachment of wires. In the protospray process, we start by printing the conductive and insulating plastics together. We then spray the dielectric layer onto the object using an airbrush. The phosphor-based emissive layer is sprayed under UV light uniformly over the object surface. Lastly, a transparent conductive electrode is sprayed onto the top of the object, and the object can be switched on. Here, we are producing a prototype for a smart watch to physicalise different potential designs. You may be wondering if this works in practice. Clearly we were able to produce demonstrators of it, but what are the constraints of the process? We performed a series of tests to evaluate it. To produce a segmented display through spraying, we must define its shape. Segments can be shaped using masking via a stencil on different layers of the sandwich structure. We performed a test to compare masking of different layers. We concluded that masking either the surface electrode or the base electrode produced the cleanest results. Different types of masking can be used. As an alternative, we introduced the ability to shape segments through protospray's process of 3D printing the base electrode. We performed a test to establish the potential of 3D printing a base electrode. We tested different types of masking, hand masking, contact masking and shadow masking. Comparing these to an embedded electrode of conductive plastic, we saw that contact masking was particularly clear cut, but the 3D printed electrode was even clearer. Within the protospray method, we carried out two tests to compare different topologies. We tested a range of extreme topologies with edges of increasing sharpness and curves in one plane and in two. This showed significant success for all topologies. We also tested different scales of wave shapes with zero crossings. This had mixed success depending on the scale. We also tested the constraints for automating parts of the protospray process. A test on 3D printer resolution and sanding showed the importance of layer height and post-processing methods. We also carried out a test on spraying on surfaces at different angles to analyse variation and deposition. We found that the spray plume had a higher concentration in its centre and that particles were drawn downwards on steeper gradients. Lastly, we look at how this process can be implemented. Protospray is intended for fabricating prototypes and other objects, specifically for makers, hobbyists, designers and researchers. We promote its use for applications such as handhelds, wearables, signage and data physicalisation. Building on these uses, the vision of this project is to combine 3D printing and automated spraying in a single machine. We envisage that this process of display fabrication could be directly automated to produce a 3D printer 
that creates irregular displays. To summarise, we have introduced Protospray, a new method for fabricating irregularly shaped interactive displays. We have analysed various conditions of the process and assessed its strengths. Lastly, we've proposed our vision of automating the protospray process in a single machine. If you'd like to find out more, please read our paper, and for producing your own irregularly shaped displays, please check out our Instructables page. I would like to thank my co-authors, Michael, Stephanie, Mike and Anne, and I look forward to discussing this work.